Okay, folks, so here's the, uh, the final video in our uh, series on increasing your website's conversion. We're gonna have a little bit, bit of a look at some of the bad news in this space, just to give it some balance. And then we're gonna go through our checklist. And uh, the checklist is the thing that I want you to use. I'm convinced if you'll use this against your websites and ask yourself those questions, you'll see a real increase in the, uh, in the conversion rate in your website. So some of the bad news. Firstly, many tests will fail. Particularly, the more testing you do on a given site, the more that you'll get tests that don't yield a benefit. Uh, I know in uh, the Samurai space, we can probably point to 10 distinct tests we've run over a couple of years. And I think of those really, there's probably seven to eight that, that really didn't generate much difference at all and, and really led nowhere. And, uh, and two to three of them have given us a 200% increase in sales. So, you know, those two to three tests, uh, you know, they pay my mortgage and pay wages of staff and do all that sort of thing. But if we hadn't done them, um, that, you know, they, they, we had a whole bunch fail to get to the good ones. The good news is testing isn't that hard to do. So you can have some failures and that's okay. Good tests can turn bad. There is this thing in testing called statistical significance, which means that uh, a test has to have a certain amount of data and Google Website Optimizer does all this for you. But basically, um, it turns green when there's been enough data through the test to actually get a reliable result. And we've seen cases where, you know, before we had enough reliable data, the test looked like it was going to make a huge difference. You know, we were going to double a business with, you know, three hours of work. And uh, then um, as enough data came through, uh, the, the, the test scores sort of, the different variations basically averaged out to be essentially the same. And, you know, the, the test went nowhere, which is disappointing, especially when you watch these things closely. Uh, another piece of news to be aware of is that Google Website Optimizer requires the ability to insert JavaScript. This is a bit of a techie one, but sometimes people using content management systems actually can't insert JavaScript. And so if you're gonna get big into testing uh, and you're deploying a new site, you may wanna ask your web developer or you may wanna think about, will I be able to insert JavaScript into the page in order to basically put JavaScript at the start and the end of each of the elements that I want to test in order to run my test. And there are no hard and fast rules. I've given you a checklist and a bunch of principles. You know, typically we would have said that, you know, less graphics um, increases conversion, but I can show cases where that's not the case, specifically where the graphics are used well to back up the sales message. So there's no hard and fast rules, but there are principles that can lead you in the right direction. And we went through those in the last video and we'll, 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 we'll uh, really polish them off with our checklist. So let's take a look at the checklist. On the page here, this is the address again, you can get it from noblesamurai.com slash checklist, and you can download it and uh, both as a Word document or as a, a PDF, and, and I'd encourage you to edit it and make it your own and add other questions to it. Uh, some qualifying questions that I ask myself is, you know, um, is the offering suffering because the sales copy is bad, or are they actually trying to sell something that's just fundamentally lousy? And sometimes there are people trying to sell stuff that I think the product's a dog and, and I just don't want to get involved with it. So uh, that's something to be aware of. Is it sellable? And morality, um, maybe this is just me, but sometimes I get all excited about looking at something and thinking, gee, I could increase the conversion rate there. But the reality is I don't want to work on projects that don't make the world a better place. So, um, you know, will the world be better if I help this person succeed is a good question to ask. Um, so. Getting into the, the, the topics, logical flow, the principle is you have to lead people through a logical sequence. So a bunch of great questions you can ask. Is there a logical flow? You know, will any page in the sequence confuse users? Is it easy, to, is this navigation structure easy in checkout process? This is really important, folks. The basic website structure, is it fundamentally flawed? Can I exchange elements on the page to increase in conversions or should I go through a whole new layout? Do I need to renovate or do I need to detonate? Expected metaphors, do people have to stop and think? If people have to stop and think to be able to use a website, that is really bad. That will That is just like the telltale sign of a, a suboptimal website that's gonna convert badly. Market segmentation, you wanna match your offers into market segments. So what are the different segments that, that exist? Can we split test landing pages and sell with greater relevance? Can we increase or duplicate our best performing channels? If you know what your channels are and you can pick the best performing one and, and, and duplicate that, that alone can be a huge profit driver for your company. 
Is the value presentation clear? Do we have a simple, clear presentation of the value that we're presenting? Um, you know, is the headline punchy? Are the benefits obvious? Um, do the graphics reinforce or do they distract? Specificity, you know, am I vague or am I specific? Are my claims just fluff and hot air or are, am I making claims that are believable? You know, can people validate these claims? And you should, you know, you want to check your headline and bullets to make sure that you're not just full of hot air and saying we're wonderful rather than actually making specific believable claims. You know, people buy from people. You want to add some personality in. This is something that, you know, as a computer geek, I don't naturally warm to. I'm a, I'm a nerdy personality type. But you want to humanize your site. You want to allow people to get a sense of who you are. Um, you, want them to, you want to have the persona of someone they trust and buy from if you're not using yourself as the persona. Um, you want to guide people without assuming industry knowledge. You know, that can kill your sales conversion, putting acronyms in that people don't know. You can use them, but you want to introduce them as you use them. Looking at the best competitive models. You know, I, I, oftentimes we don't want to look at our competitors because we, we think sometimes there's, I don't know, bad, that, that's bad for some reason, but nothing could be further than the truth. You want to get great ideas from your competitors and take them and enhance them. And, and you know, there's nothing new under the sun. You want to go and look at your competitors and people in other markets and, and get ideas from elsewhere. Um, you know, I'm, in Australia here, often what I'll do is I'll, people will say, you know, look, I've looked at my competitors and there's only three in Australia. And I'll say, great, go and look at competitors in the US or the UK and see what those people are doing, even if they're not going to sell to your customers because of geographic reasons. Go and get some ideas from your competitors. Skilled salespeople gain insights from those who sell the product most successfully. If you are not the best salesperson of this product, humbly go and ask the person who is how they do it, what they say, watch them do it, record them, whatever it takes to find out what it is that enables them to sell this product well. Use your scarcity, use your urgency, give people a reason not just to believe your product is good value, but to buy it now. That the notion of adding scarcity can be a really powerful driver, and and if you've got a you know I know in the market samurai world we've had um, specific occasions where we've done a special offer of some form, um, and and that's been you know that that's brought us more sales in three days than we've got in three months. So um, you know you want to and we get good sales every month. So you want to use these techniques um, wisely, and they'll be very powerful. Social proof. People want to feel part of a crowd. They don't want to be the first person. They want to be the 57th person. You know, they, they want to feel part of the crowd. So, so make use of social proof elements. Authority, is there someone that your marketplace will look to and will listen to and respect that you can use to A, give, give you the right to command attention up front and B, to be convincing? Distractions, you, you, you know, distractions and friction. Um, one of the worst things you can do in your ordering process is have a whole bunch of links that people don't need to see. You know, in the ordering process, when people are giving you money, that page should be really simple and should say, okay, you've got to the point where you're gonna give us money, don't ask them to do anything else, just ask them to give you money. Um, you know, am I, <laughs> classic one, am I tempting my users with dancing cats on YouTube? Um, you don't want to be doing that. You know, you want to um, you don't want to distract them away from your sales message. Risk reduction. How can I take the risk away from my customers? And, and a crime that I, I see so often is people will actually have. I'll ask them if there's a product, if there's a problem, can people get their money back? And they'll say, Yeah, sure. And then I'll say, It's written nowhere on your website that that's the case. You know, you've got to reinforce to people if 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 you are reducing people's risk then tell them about that. And if you're not, ask yourself the question, can I do that? Is, is there a reason that I shouldn't be doing that? And find a way to reduce risk in working with you and you'll get more people to work with you. So folks, there's the checklist. Uh, I hope you found this beneficial. I'd love it in the blog comments if you would uh, um, run some tests, um, do some work and give us some feedback. I know that this material is, is, is kind of high level and strategic and, and this sort of we've given you an overview of, of this area of conversion. but Folks, the simple reality is if we hadn't worked on our conversion, we just wouldn't be where we are today. You know, we have split tests that have, that have driven our conversion rates up to the point where we've been able to put on new staff and, and take um, you know, income from our company in a way that we just wouldn't be able to do if we hadn't worked on conversion. And I think this is the missing link. I think this is what the professionals do that the amateurs don't. And so if you knew all of this stuff and you haven't been doing it, then maybe this is a nice, you know, a nice kick in the pants, a nice 
shove to say, hey folks, get in there and do this because this is really where the, uh, where, where the money's at. Uh, on this checklist page, if you haven't been there yet, I've put up the checklist. I've also put links to some um, specifics around Google Website Optimizer, how you can use that, and some other bits and pieces just so that you've got the, the complete picture to work with. Thanks for that, folks. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope the checklist makes a big difference in your business, and uh, we'll talk again soon.